This is a 2018 Jeep Wrangler, and it is totally 100% new, completely redesigned compared to last year's model. Now, to your untrained eye, it may not look completely new, but it is, and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the first all-new Wrangler in 10 years. First, a little background. The Wrangler traces its lineage to World War II when the first military Jeeps were put into use for combat. A civilian model came out soon after the war called CJ for civilian Jeep, and CJ models were changed and sculpted and updated in various forms all the way through the 1980s when Jeep finally rolled out the Wrangler name with a redesign for the 1987 model year. This is only the fourth all-new Wrangler since then in 30 years. And yes, this is an all-new Wrangler. Even though it looks fairly similar to the outgoing model, that's only because Jeep doesn't want to mess with what works. But it is completely new, and I'm going to show it all to you. First, I'm going to show you all of the cool quirks and features, and then I'm going to get it out on the road and let you know how I think it drives, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. I should mention I'm filming this video just outside Tucson, Arizona. Jeep flew me out here and put me up in a hotel to attend the launch of the all-new Wrangler because it isn't yet on sale to the public. I hope other outlets covering the Wrangler here make a similar disclosure. Anyway, for more of my thoughts on the Wrangler, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've written a column about it, and I've compiled a list of the craziest, most insane, most ridiculous Wrangler models currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Time to start off the quirks and features. There are a lot of them, so get ready. I'm going to start with maybe the coolest feature in the new Wrangler. That would be the tops. There are three different top options, two of which are very cool. Now, this particular Wrangler has the third one, kind of the boring ones, just a normal hard top. The current Wrangler has basically the same thing. You can get it in either black plastic or body color, and the panels above the driver's seat lift off, so you can take them off for an open air feel. The other two are far more exciting. I'm going to start with the soft top convertible, which is way easier to remove than the old one, especially the windows. Starting with the rear window, you first flip up the bottom part and then you peel off the sides and there are no zippers. You just pull it out of its little tab and then you slide it off the rear of the car without any trouble like this. The side windows are just as easy. Here's the complete removal of a side window in just 12 seconds and now it's off your Wrangler. Here's a close up of how easy it is to slide those windows out. And here's the cool thing, with the rear windows out, you can drive around like this, allowing in airflow if you don't want to put the top all the way down. Next up, the actual process of dropping the top. It starts easily enough, just unlatch at the top of the windshield on the driver's side and on the passenger side, and then you can just fold it back one-handed to this position. Jeep says you can even drive like this at highway speeds, but if you want the top all the way back down, simply come around to the back, pull this plastic lever, and then from there the top easily goes the rest of the way down. Now the top is locked down, and if you want to put it up, you'll need to unlock it using this lever, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side, and then from from there, it's surprisingly easy. You can just put the entire top up using only one hand, as I've demonstrated here. Getting the windows back in is easier than you think. Just line up this rubber track and they slide right back in place. Then you go around and push the sides in, making sure they fit snugly on the body. The third top option is a power top, which is an extra cost over the standard hardtop. Now, this Wrangler is equipped with the power top. The power top cars have painted rails that go all the way down the side. To open the power top, you push a little button next to the rear view mirror on the top of the windshield, and then the power top automatically retracts basically the entire way down the car so it feels like a convertible. Now Jeep told me the interesting thing about this is the rails basically have to stay in place. You can remove them but it's difficult and they don't recommend it because it's difficult to line them back up when you want to put them back in. So if you get the body colored hardtop with the power top you really aren't able to completely remove everything unless you want to put up with some headaches. But the power top is not the coolest thing about the Wranglers with the power top. The coolest thing is right back here. It's this window which comes off very, very easily. Check this out. You undo two latches inside the window. Then you go over here, you open the door, and then that's all you got to do. And now take a look at this with the top open and the window out. It feels like you're basically driving around with no roof on, even if you can't remove those rails. And it's just as easy to get these windows back in place. It's not difficult at all. When you want to close up your Wrangler so people can't steal your stuff, all you got to do, boom, now the window is in. You go in, you relatch those things inside, and you're done. 
Okay, now that the tops are out of the way, we move on to the headlights. Now there are two different headlight options in the new Wrangler. You can get standard halogens or you can get these LEDs. Now, all Wranglers, regardless of which headlight you get, will have LED running lights up here in the fenders. Here's how they look. And you can put on the turn signals. They're also LED. They also look pretty cool. But if you get the LED headlights, this is basically the new face of the Wrangler. It includes an LED circle around the headlight. And when you put on the headlight, it is, of course, an LED. If you get the Wrangler with halogens, that LED circle goes away. The only LEDs up front you have are the ones on the fender. Now, still on the front up here, there are three trim levels in this car. Sport is the base trim level. Sahara, that's this one, is sort of the nice one. You can get some luxury features. And then Rubicon is the off-roading one. Now, the Rubicon has some really cool stuff up front, one of which is the fact that the bumper is partially removable. The front part always stays in place, but you can remove the part in front of the wheel. So when you fit bigger tires to go off-roading, you don't have to hack up your bumper. You can just remove it. Jeep allows that from the factory. The Rubicon also has a couple of other cool things. One of them is the fact that the fenders are just a little bit higher to accommodate larger tires that they know Jeep people are going to stick on there. Also in front, these little rubberized hood handles have always been a staple in Wranglers. And on the new Wrangler, they also contain the windshield washer jets, adding some extra purpose to their existence. Next up, we move on to another interesting thing up front. Take a look at the grill here in the hood, you notice something's missing? How about the Jeep badge? They're not installing a Jeep badge on the front of the Wrangler. I asked the designers about this and they said, the grill is our logo and we're just gonna go with that. The Jeep badge is prominently featured on both front fenders, but it isn't in the front. Can you think of any other car where they're so confident in their grill design that they just don't put their logo on the front? Now, speaking of the fender over here, a couple of interesting things, one of which is just the glut of badges on the side of this car. It's probably gone a little too far. Do you really need Sahara and Jeep and Wrangler Unlimited and on the other side, trail rated? It's a bit much. Now, also on the fender is this little plastic thing and this indentation here. It's one of the easiest ways to tell apart the new Wrangler from most of the old Wrangler models, which don't have that. Jeep told me it has a practical purpose beyond just sort of a new styling element. Now, on the old Wranglers, you drive around and sort of the, the hood would flap a little bit. This car wasn't known for its luxurious driving experience. By putting that there, it just allows the air to flow around the front of the car better, which improves the driving experience and eliminates some of the wind rush and wind noise you heard in the old one. And speaking of the hood, something I didn't know about the Wrangler, Wrangler people are gonna make fun of me for, do you know there's no interior hood release? You could just walk up to a Wrangler and open up the hood. All you gotta do is unlatch these little latches on the side, there's one on each side, and then open the little hood latch in the middle, and then you're in. And in the Wrangler, you can fold the hood all the way back <laughs> so that it touches the top of the windshield, which makes for an easy experience if you're trying to get anything done under the hood, but also gives the car kind of a crazy look when it's in place all the way up. Now, also on the side, something interesting in the brake light for the car quirk geeks out there like me. The brake light itself is pretty normal. It looks like the one in the Jeep Renegade. The interesting thing is on this side, it's this little piece of plastic that protrudes out to the side. That is there to be the blind spot monitor. The blind spot monitor uses this triangle in the mirror to alert you if there's a car in your blind spot so you don't accidentally hit it while you're changing lanes. Now basically every other car, the fender lines up flush with the side of the car. They mount the blind spot monitor somewhere in the taillight. They hide it. It's pretty easy. But it wasn't as easy in the Wrangler. Because of the Jeep's design, the blind spot monitor couldn't be mounted on the side of the Wrangler as it couldn't see past the Wrangler's big wheel arch. So Jeep had to move the taillights so they stick out past the rear fender in order for the blind spot monitor to get a clear look at the Wrangler's entire blind spot. And that could lead to a problem when you're off-roading because if you're going through a thick forest or I don't know, whatever, something could come along the side of the car and then basically hit this and take the whole tail light off, which could be an issue. But the Jeep people told me if they wanted to put blind spot monitoring in this car, which basically everything has now, this was the only way they could do it. And they worked really hard to find another solution and this is it. Now, moving along all the way to the back of the Wrangler, another car geek quirk. The cool thing about this car, this third brake light is adjustable. So when Jeep people inevitably go and switch out their tires and put giant tires on this thing so they can go off-roading or mudding or whatever, you just unscrew the back of the third brake light, you lift it up, and then you screw it right back in, and so it can accommodate any tire size. And that way you can pass inspection. If your state has it, you can have all your brake lights in place, even if you get a big tire on the back without having to switch to some sort of aftermarket brake light solution. 
But the blind spot monitor and the adjustable third brake light are nowhere near the coolest things about the back of this car. That honor goes to the backup camera. The backup camera is hidden in here in the middle of the rear tire. And you're thinking, that's a terrible idea. If I get a flat tire, does that mean I have to disconnect the backup camera in order to get the tire off? No, you don't. All you have to do in order to access the spare tire and deal with the backup camera is take a little tool and take off this plastic protective cover over the backup camera. You just turn it from lock to unlock and then you pull the cover right off. Pretty easy. Then you can see the backup camera piece sticks out and the tire and wheel slide right over it. You don't have to do anything with the backup camera in order to get this off the car. And here's the cool thing, the backup camera is shrouded in metal. So if you're trying to get the tire back on the car, you don't have to worry about maybe damaging the camera. You can just lift it right up, slam it on top of this thing and it won't break, which is a really great idea. But then you're thinking, well, wait a minute, how do you get a tool to take off the little plastic cover? And that's where we get to the coolest part about this car. It comes with a toolkit to do basically everything. The center console in the middle in the front seat is divided into two pieces. There's the normal center console, which is rather large and has a lot of room for stuff. And then there's the upper one, and that contains the toolkit, and it contains everything you need to take off this, it contains everything you need to lower the front windshield, which you can fold down, and to remove the doors. The Wrangler comes with this stuff standard. And inside that little tool case, there's even a nice little manual for how to use everything, just in case you're confused. And yes, the windshield can fold. Now, this is a characteristic that goes back to the military Jeeps from the 40s. They were basically rectangles, except for the windshield sticking up. So they made a folding windshield, which made it easier for them to be shipped. Then they were really just rectangles and you could stack them or put them in crates, whatever you had to do. And that has carried on through all the other Wranglers and the windshield has always been able to fold, but it's always been kind of difficult to do. Now that generally isn't a problem for most people. Most people don't want to fold their windshield because when you're driving along at 50 on the highway, that's a lot of wind coming in there. You basically need to be wearing a mask or a helmet. But if you're off-roading, folding the windshield can be nice and fun. And so today I am going to demonstrate how to fold the windshield in the new Jeep Wrangler. Jeep has made a huge effort to ensure the windshield is a lot easier to fold in the new Wrangler. And it starts right here by removing this little cap over the windshield wipers and exposing this bolt. Next, take your tool directly out of your Wrangler toolkit and unscrew the bolt, keeping the wipers in place. Then just loosen the wipers a bit until they come right off. Once you've got the wipers off, it's really easy from here. Next, fold away the visor inside the Wrangler and take your tool to the top of the windshield where you'll find a bolt that holds the windshield in place. Unscrew it and three others and you'll find they all come out pretty easily. With this particular top, you then have to remove the hard top panels above the front seats, but it's very easy to unlatch them and then carry them away as I'm demonstrating here. And now the windshield is ready to be lowered, but I'm going to leave you in suspense for just a second. First off, I should say that took me only about six minutes. The hardest part is actually removing the wipers because they're a little tricky to get to over the hood. Six minutes to get the windshield down, but then I have all these excess bolts and screws from taking it off. So what do I do? Well, Open this up back here and you'll see one of the coolest things in this entire vehicle. There is a place to put all of the screws and the bolts when you take stuff off. There's one for the roof, the door hinges, and there's another one for the windshield. So I just stick my bolts right in here. And then when it's time to put the windshield back on later, I'll know exactly where they are. That's especially useful if I've been off-roading on the trails and the car's been getting kicked around, things get loose, they fly everywhere. But with this, they're right where I know they'll be. And I could just put this cover down and they won't go anywhere. And so now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. The wipers are off, the screws are off, and <laughs> there it is. The windshield is down. So if you're rock crawling, off-roading at low speeds, you can open it up and really feel like you're totally open air in this thing. That is so cool. And by the way, those little rubber hooks on the top of the hood, they do have an extra purpose. When the windshield goes down, it rests on top of those things so it doesn't damage the paint on the windshield frame or the hood or damage the actual sheet metal. And so we can enjoy the open air Jeep experience. Except I'm actually gonna put it right back on because I'm not rock crawling and I don't wanna drive this thing more than about 12 miles an hour with the windshield down and all the wind slamming into my face. But you get the idea. 
Okay, so this has already been a fairly involved video, and I haven't even shown you the quirks and features of the inside. So time to go inside. I'm going to start with the inside of the tailgate, and namely this label right here, which is really cool looking. This is on every single Wrangler, and it shows you where it was built, but also useful stuff like the water fording depth, the approach angle, the departure angle. Really, it's just there. It's kind of a gimmick to look cool, but they got me. I think it looks cool. Also interesting on the inside of the tailgate, you can see these lines right here. These lines are designed to have a pack mounted to them, or various packs, so that you can store a can of gasoline, a flashlight, some extra food in case you're going off into the wilderness. A pack can just clip right onto them. Naturally, Jeep will be happy to sell you a pack that clips directly on to these lines in the tailgate. Two other interesting things back here. One is there's an optional nine speaker stereo in this vehicle. And if you choose that option, you get a rear subwoofer that is waterproof. So if you got the top off and it starts to rain, you're having a party, you don't have to worry about your sound system. Also neat back here is the fact that the roll bars and all the Wranglers are painted. Even the ones that come with the body colored hardtop, which will probably rarely be removed. They're all painted so that if you do remove the top, you sort of preserve the car's overall look. All right, moving on to the back seat. Now there's only a couple of interesting quirks back here. One of which is the fact that the four-door models have standard air vents for climate control for rear seat passengers. I like the fact that they just sort of twirl. They look like an Oreo cookie and you can just kind of twirl them and twirl them at your leisure. For those of you who are more mature than me and don't get so easily amused, one interesting thing in the back seat of the Wrangler is the center armrest. You can fold it down just like a center armrest in every other car. And when you do fold it down, you'll notice that you have cup holders. Fold it back up and you'll notice those cup holders are the center headrest. So when it's in place, it's a headrest. When it's down, it's cup holders. That is a pretty smart idea, Jeep. Good thinking. Next up, we move on to the doors, and specifically removing the doors. Now, I had to round up three Wranglers to show you how all the tops work. I opened the hood. I took down the windshield. I ain't taking off the doors, but apparently it is actually pretty easy. Now on the outside, on the hinge, Jeep has printed exactly what size driver you'll need in order to get them off. And naturally that can be found in the standard Jeep toolkit that comes with your Wrangler. Now, once you've removed the doors, they do have a really cool party trick because it's kind of difficult and unwieldy to lift these big doors. There are little cutouts below the door armrest in both the front and the rear doors where you can lift them like a piece of luggage. So when you take them off, you can sort of walk with them a lot easier than you could have in previous Wranglers. Now, speaking of the front doors, open the front doors, climb in, and you will find an entire plethora of quirks and features up here, starting with the little screen in the instrument panel. When you start the car, take a look at that little movie that plays. It's basically an old Jeep becoming a new Jeep, but look closer and you'll see something even cooler. You see that little Jeep on the bottom of the screen going across the screen? That is one of the coolest things I've seen in a startup group graphic. And then there are a couple of other interesting and cool things in there. For example, in the background of the screen, you can see an old military Jeep if you look really closely. In fact, if you look closely, you'll find old Jeeps hidden all over this thing, basically throughout this vehicle, not just in the gauge cluster. For example, the top of the shift lever has an old military style Jeep on it. How about the base of the windshield in the corner on the passenger side? There's an old little military style Jeep. Looks like it's about to climb up the windshield. And then there's my favorite, the wheels. All of the wheels wheels have little old military Jeeps in them, and it's like a little Jeep Easter egg for people who really appreciate the brand. Also cool is the fact that the Rubicon models now offer built-in auxiliary switches. Basically, in the past, if you wanted to mount extra lights or an air compressor to your Wrangler, you had to also drill into your dash and mount a switch somewhere that was kind of ugly. Now, those switches are ready for whatever you want to mount on your Wrangler. To the left of the auxiliary switches in the Rubicon, you will find the differential lock. It's painted red to match the tow hooks for some reason. It's pretty easy to use. You just flip it up and down to turn on the rear diff lock or all the diff locks, and they just automatically go on for you. Also interesting in the interior, I really like the look of the door handles and specifically the door locks. Now, when the door is unlocked as it is right now, I like the fact that it doesn't look crappy like some exposed piece of plastic you have to push to lock it and make it look good. Instead, it looks nice when it's unlocked, but when you lock it, it looks even cooler. A little lock appears so you know your door is really locked. It's a nice little silly touch, but I think it looks cool. Also cool in the interior, I really like all the storage and specifically I like the storage at the top of the dashboard 
board. There are a couple of little cubbies there for whatever you might want, but more specifically, they're rubberized. So whatever you put up there isn't going to be rolling around as you drive around, or better yet, as you're off-roading. In fact, that rubberization is sort of a Wrangler hallmark because this interior was made to get sprayed down, and Jeep tells me you really can spray it down. For example, the infotainment screen is just a regular giant infotainment screen, but it's surrounded by this huge rubberized frame. It looks like one of those giant phone cases people use, so big they can't even fit their phone in the pocket. I guess the theory here is that the rubber acts as a seal, and it makes sure that if you do hose down the interior, water isn't going to seep into the screen around the edges. Also cool, the cup holders are rubberized, and in the middle of the cup holders, there's a little rubberized spot where you can stick your smartphone so it won't roll around. As for the switches in the middle of the center control stack, these are unique to the Wrangler, so I'm not going to complain about Chrysler parts sharing. They're all unique, and one cool way you can tell they're unique, the recirculating air button, which is the same in basically every car. It's just a car with like a wind inside of it. In this thing, it's a Wrangler with wind inside of it, which is kind of cool. Only I get excited about that stuff, but hey, they did it. Something I don't like about the center switches is the window switches. They're kind of difficult to reach at the very bottom of the center control stack, and they're just weird to operate. You push them down and they roll down. That's simple enough, but to roll them back up, you kind of have to stick your finger under there and pull. It's a weird operation that almost makes you take your eyes off the road, and it is definitely not my first choice for window switch. I prefer the window switches in the old Wrangler, where they were just toggles. You push them down, roll down, and up to roll up. It seemed like a simpler design. And finally, we got to talk about equipment and technology because this new Wrangler has a lot of stuff, which is going to be good news for people who like the look of the Wrangler and just sort of want to drive this around on the pavement without doing any crazy off-roading or windshield removing. Now, the Jeep people hate those people, but I think they'll appreciate at least some of this stuff too. I'm going to start in the infotainment system. The coolest thing I think about this infotainment system is the drag and drop feature. Basically, the bottom line of the infotainment system is always visible on every screen. Navigation, phone, doesn't matter what you're on, and you can drag and drop items to that bottom line. So for example, I always complain that the heated seat controls shouldn't be hidden in some menu. Well, they don't have to be. You can drag and drop them to that bottom line. It is a brilliant idea borrowed from cell phones, and truly every car should use this. Also interesting in the infotainment system is the mirror dimmer. This mirror is frameless and the dimmer is not connected to it like in every other car. If you want to dim the mirror or undim it for night driving or daytime driving, you got to go into the infotainment system and push a little button. I've never seen that before in any car. But beyond the infotainment system, this car also has some cool features. For example, side airbags are now standard in all Wranglers. This car has a backup camera, like all cars are now mandated to, basically. But this car also has available parking sensors. It has a blind spot monitoring system, like I showed you before. And it even has rear cross-traffic alerts. So if you're backing up, it'll tell you if a car is coming towards you, which is good if you're in a tight parking lot. One thing it doesn't have, forward collision warning or automatic forward collision braking. That's because the sensor for that would have to go up here on the windshield, and if you're going to have a car with a fold-down windshield, you're just not going to get that sensor in there. The result is that it also doesn't have automatic wipers, no matter how much you spend for this car, for the same reason. But there are some sacrifices that must be made if you get a Wrangler. So those are all the cool quirks and features of the Wrangler. Now it's time to get this thing out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new Wrangler. I've spent a lot of time in JK Wranglers. That was the old body style that came out in like 2007. Uh, and I liked them, but you know, they felt like kind of compromised trucks. You got them and you put up with a bunch of crap in order to get the cool Wrangler styling. This new one drives so much better on road than the outgoing Wrangler. It is crazy. I mean, so much better on road. It actually f drives like a legitimate automobile, <laughs> which surprises me because it's, you know, I just opened, I just took the windshield off. I hesitate to say this because Wrangler people are gonna get upset. It drives like an SUV. It drives like a regular SUV, Pathfinder or Pilot. There's more wind noise. Um, you can hear the tire noise more with certain tires. However, uh, in terms of like stability, it doesn't like bum, 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 bum. you know, it doesn't feel like there's wind rush or any sort of loudness. It just feels like a vehicle should if it's an on road normal automobile. Um, it's smooth. Usually, in order to smooth out a car as much as they have from one generation to the next, you have to widen it and lower this and change the rake of that, and you have to do all sorts of stuff. Um, and the, this thing looks the same but it's just better. It obviously doesn't drive, handle, steer like a sports car. 
Um, but there's no you know vagueness on center, just a little bit of play on center in the steering. Otherwise, it's very predictable. Floor it here. It's a Jeep. It's not, it's not all that fast. Even though this is the Pentastar V6 and has like 290 horsepower or something, it doesn't feel that fast. And I drove the four-cylinder model. There's going to be a four-cylinder and a V6. They both have basically the same power ratings. The only difference is that the V6 has a little bit more torque. I drove the four-cylinder model and uh, it was about the same. I mean, neither of these cars are fast. The V6 is, to me, is a little bit more responsive. The four-cylinder is a little bit more peaky. You floor it and it's kind of build and then goes. I know a lot of Jeep people are going to be like, well, I'm not going to get a four-cylinder. Just like four Def 150 people. I'm not going to get a V6 EcoBoost. But the truth is it's pretty good. And they told us that the fuel economy for the V6 is 18 city and 23 highway, which is pretty good, it's fine. But that they didn't tell us the four cylinder fuel mileage yet. And the four cylinder is not coming out until mid 2018. Uh, with the four cylinder, if 1823 is the number for the V6, I wouldn't be surprised if the four cylinder is getting over 20 city, which is really impressive considering that this thing does not exactly have the aerodynamics you'd expect uh, from a vehicle that's getting 20 city. I'm just really impressed by the smoothness and I'm also impressed by how uh, stable it feels. It doesn't feel like, you know, the, the old Wrangler, people come to me and they say, I want a Wrangler. And I'd say, have you driven one? Do you, you sure you want a Wrangler? Uh, it finally feels like you can enjoy the styling and the coolness of that without, you know, that sort of really, you know, I have to put up with the top flapping around and above 70, it feels like it's gonna explode, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff is gone. This car just feels a lot better. Now, I wanna also say, I took a Rubicon off-roading yesterday. And not the kind of off-roading that I'm showing you on the screen right now. This is kinda of legit, but any car can do this, any off-road SUV. I took it on some rocks and some hills where I was so scared, I didn't get any film because I was sitting in the driver's seat and I was petrified. 20 minutes, spotters the whole way, uh, and it just handles it. And it's like, what can't I do? Uh, I was really, really, really impressed with the off-road capability of this thing. And so that's the 2018 Jeep Wrangler, which has managed to pull off an amazing feat. It's a dramatic improvement over its predecessor, and yet it still has basically the same cool looks and styling that people seem to love about these things. You know, I kind of thought this car would be so-so. Based on its sort of small design change, I figured it would only be slightly improved over the outgoing model, but it's way better better on-road. It's still tremendously impressive off-road, and it's loaded with a lot of cool quirks and features and Easter eggs. Wrangler people are always skeptical of the new Wrangler. They always hate it at first, but I think Wrangler people will love this Wrangler, and I also think regular people will appreciate it too. And now it's time to show my opinion numerically with the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Wrangler is fine, but it's a familiar design by now. And although most people like it on a personal level, I wish Jeep had done a little extra to change the look for 2018. It gets a five out of 10. Next up is acceleration. Jeep hasn't published the zero to 60 time yet, but I suspect somewhere in the high six second range and it gets a two out of 10. Although I might be wrong and I may have to adjust this to a one. Handling is good for an SUV and great for an SUV like the Wrangler, but obviously a little less than average in the grand scheme of things. And it gets a four out of 10. Cool factor is next and the Wrangler is about average. These are cool, but highly attainable. And you see dozens of them every day. What you can do with it is cool, but the Wrangler itself isn't hugely cool on its face and it gets a five out of 10. Out of 10. Finally, importance. Like I said, there are zillions of Wranglers, and while the new one is a huge deal right now, in a year we'll see them everywhere. Still, it's more important than a Camry or a Kia Optima, and it gets a 4 out of 10, bringing the total weekend score to 20 out of 50. Not surprising, since the Doug score is a bit biased towards sports and performance cars. On to the daily categories, starting with features. The Wrangler is pretty well equipped, but not insanely so. It has more features than the old one, but in the grand scheme of things, it's just a bit better than average, and thus it gets a 6 out of 10. Next up is Comfort, which has improved dramatically, but it's still no luxury car. It gets a 5 out of 10. Quality is decent. Materials are good for the type of vehicle this is, and Wranglers are relatively reliable, relative to most of the expensive, fragile European stuff I usually test, and it gets a 6 out of 10. As for practicality, we don't know yet what the cargo volume is, but based on what I observed and its great capabilities, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Finally, there's value. These are the starting prices of all the Wrangler models, and it's certainly getting more expensive than it was with a price hike for 2018. 
18. But it's still a fun, capable convertible with amazing resale value, and it easily gets a 7 out of 10, bringing the total daily score to 32 out of 50. Add it all up, and the total Doug score is 52 out of 100, which is weak, but the Wrangler isn't the kind of car that's going to do well in the Doug score, which is topped with exotic sports cars. It is, however, the best Wrangler yet.